Hey everybody, um, so we're going to do a quick uh, recap of some of the stuff we went over in class. Um, we had talked about <clears throat> the first one um, being uh, uh, the hot hole uh, texture, um, which uh, I think somebody had asked because they, you know, we had to kind of brush over that really quickly. Um, again, I encourage you to go to uh, um, something like 3dbuzz.com um, or something like that so you can... Uh, uh, kind of brush up on some of the Maya stuff because um, that would just be handy if we go over here I'll drag this in here so this is 3D Buzz it's just a website you sign up for a free account and there's tons and tons of free um, you know free little videos you can watch just on some basic stuff um, it would strongly strongly be encouraged you to do that so okay <clears throat> very quickly let's go over this um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to give this thing a new texture because, as we said earlier, it only has a uh, default Lambert um, shader on there. So we're going to go to the rendering mode. Actually, we don't have to go to rendering mode. We just have to go to Window, Rendering Editors, Hypershade. When Hypershade comes up, and actually popped up on my other monitor, so let me get it over here for you. Um, Hypershade came up. We're just going to create a new um, shader. Uh, for this we don't really need highlights so we're going to just create another Lambert. Of course always name your shaders. So uh, no, I have this Lambert selected. Um, we'll call it Cole um, Matt. And then we can actually minim um, actually what we're going to do before we do that is I'm just going to select the coal, then right click on this coal material, assign material to selection. Okay. So then we can we can actually minimize this or close it if we need to. I want to go ahead and minimize it. And then I can look at our coal material uh, attribute over here. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to map something into this color um, by clicking on this little checkerboard pattern over here. Again we said there's uh, multiple options. There's you know, solid fracture. There's stucco. Play with these and find the one you like. Um, you know, I'll, I'll do. I'll, I'm going to go ahead and do noise again because I know it has a time element to it. You, it check some of the others and see what see if they do or not. Um, so noise. Okay. And what that opened up is the noise material over here. I want to show you real quick in the hypershade what that looks like. If you right click here and say uh, graph network, you'll see that now we have the coal material, we have this noise texture that is being mapped into the color highlight over there, you can see it's mapped over or mapped, mapped into color underscore mat dot color and then this is just a little node that kind of tells it how to place this 2D texture on a 3D object. It's not the UVs, but it's a it's a object that will do stuff like allow you to duplicate the number of times it repeats a UV or something like that. Um, what we're going to actually be editing is this noise. Okay, so I got that selected and it's up in our attribute editor here. Um, all I'm really going to do is I'm going to change our color balance I'm to choose some sort of orange that I think is like the the darkest orange. I want to make it a darker orange for that one click off of it and then choose black alright that's not right of course that works if I do this the other way there we go that's the one we wanted to use uh, black into the default color and then orange is the color gain so if we render that really quickly you'll see what that looks like. Um, ignore my UV pinching up here, but that'll give you a, an idea. You'd probably want to place that in a way to where you can't see that or do some UV work on that to uh, uh, to make that work better. Um, <clears throat> from that we can actually animate is it yeah, up here at the top. Under Noise Attribute, we can actually animate the time. You can also adjust these things and find something you like. Um, you can play with these and animate those as well if you'd like. Uh, amplitude, 
ratio is going to give you like sharper or whatever grain. Um, <clears throat> so we can animate this time element, of course, by taking the first frame of our animation, right click, set key, taking the last frame of our animation, adjusting this time. And what will happen is if uh, if you scrub through the timeline, you'll actually see it updating on here. And actually, I think if you hit six, you'll see a very rough version over here. This is this is sort of the shaded um, version. Seven is lit, but since there's not a good light in there, it's not showing up. So you just kind of scrub through, and you can kind of see that it has that change happening. And you know, if it's render that out as a test, if it's if it's change is happening too quick, then um, what you can actually do is with this object uh, color mat selected, we can go into our animation editor, our graph editor, and oh, well, that's not how you select it, my god. We'll go back to uh, channel box, polysphere. No, actually, the way, I think the way we have to select is select it through the material editor. So you go to Hypershade, select that material. Yeah. Um, you may even have to right click and say Graph Network and select that material. Possibly that. So you can dig around in there until you find it. And then um, Animation Editor, Tracks Editor. Not tracks editor, graph editor, uh, window animation editor, graph editor. Yeah, now we have this one long curve that goes up to that, and we're like, okay, we didn't need it to go all the way up to one, so we can change that to say 0.2 or something like that, and shift that down. <clears throat> That's again, you have to uh, you have to go into the um, material editor, graph out, so right click, comb material graph network and that will expand the entire network and it's this noise one time attribute. Alright, so that's going to give us this um, slow animated change um, and if we render that we can kind of see what that looks like. It looks alright, it doesn't really look like a hot coal. So we're going to go back to our attribute editor and um, this is on the, the coal material node, uh, not the texture node itself. Um, we're actually just going to turn up our uh, ambient color a little bit. What that means is it's just going to have a uh, an ambient um, a level of like brightness that comes off of it um, that is by default you know a white color or a lighter color and it's going to render a little bit brighter so it's it's not going to receive shadows because of that as well. Um, I'll receive some shadows but not as much. Uh, if you crank that all the way up it's not going to receive any. And to add just a touch of a glow to it, go to Special Effect, turn up Glow Intensity just a little bit, and just play with that until you find one that you like. That's not high enough, so maybe that. There we go. So you can do a hot coal like that, and then as you as you render that, or as you go through the that progression and render new frames, you can see a a slight change in it as it goes and you get all the way to the end here and, and render it and see the change between those two are pretty significant. <clears throat> this is rendering super fast, it's rendering in less than a frame a second so you can do that uh, as a test and then import that in or, or hide everything else in your scene and, and do this as an, a little render test to to get that working render wise before you actually put that into the the final piece. So, Because the, the thing that would suck is to render this out and it would be like three minutes a frame to render and then you get to the end of it and realize that this was changing too quick or something like that. Okay, so that's the texturing part. Let's see how quick or how much of the uh, um, smoke I can go through one more time. So again what we're going to do is we're going to go to dynamic or in dynamics. We're going to create uh, in particles. Um, I'm going to go use um, create in particles emit from object. I may regret that later. Actually I think I am going to regret that so I'm actually not going to do that. I'm going to undo that. And then if I go back 
uh, edit, undo current time, edit, undo this until I There we go. Um, I'm actually just going to create an emitter um, somewhere close to it, as I don't want it emitting from every uh, every pore. Create in particle. Um, create emitter. Okay, and we can't really see it very much, so I'm actually going to move this up, but we'll we'll probably move it back down later. Um, move this up to the top here. Okay. Again, I'm going to go ahead and extend this out to something like, I guess something like a hundred, um, let's do 130. Okay, now we got time for it to uh, leak out. Okay, so we can see what this is emitting like. And mine is skipping some frames, so I'm actually going to go ahead and set mine to play every frame. Save. Uh, which means it'll probably play a little fast at first, but. Yeah. Alright, so we have our emitter selected. Going to get open the outliner just so we need it to select stuff we can. Um, with the emitter selected, I'm going to go to the emitter first. I'm going to change Omni to directional. Um, so if we're still playing that, we see now that it's shooting directional off to one side. It's shooting it in X. We need it to shoot it in Y. So we're going to change direction X to 0 direction Y to 1. Now if we restart that we'll see that it's shooting it straight up. Uh, we can change spread a little bit to have it you know, spew out a little bit more. And of course this is playing it way faster than it will actually be playing it. Um, okay, now we want them to start dying. Um, and that is actually I think everything else is actually going to be under our M particle shape. So the first thing we'll do is adjust lifespan, random range. Um, let's say that these things live three seconds, and lifespan range. Let's change it to two. What's that look like? Yeah, I'm going to make this longer, and I kind of suggest. You do as well because you wanted to. You want to be able to render some of it with it actually, you know, finished looking smoke. Um, also because I just made my my uh, coal here way too big. I'll just scale that down, and we'll just do this whole thing on a smaller scale. Um, grab the emitter, lower the emitter back down here. Okay. And now if we watch this, we're just making our uh, thing smoke a little bit. So we're going to select the end particle 1, uh, which is the same thing as selecting emitter 1 and just choosing the end particle shape 1. They, they both have the end particle shape 1 node on there. Um, so you know, however you want to do that, you just need the end particle shape 1 node. So we have our death rate working pretty well. Particle size, I want to start big and go little. So I'm going to hit play and it's going to play a little clunky at first there. Um, I want, I'm sorry, I want it to start small and go big, not start big and go small. Um, so maybe something like that. Uh, maybe I just want it to start big as well. Yeah, we can play around with that. Um, something else we can play with in the emitter is uh, the shape. Instead of going directional, we could do volume. But I'm not crazy about how that's looking because it's spitting them everywhere, so we would need them to go in a very specific direction. Maybe a surface. Uh. Anyway, let me uh, let me go ahead and stop this because we're actually going to run out of time here. I'm getting close to the 15 minutes. I'll continue it in the next video.